answer. Now this is an algorithm for computing matrix chain multiplication or the matrix chain order. We know this dimension, the number of rows and number of columns are actually equal to n. And uh, our p vector is from 0 to 4. That means there were 5 elements where we have prepared 4 rows and 4 columns. That's why we have to initialize n is equal to p dot length minus 1. So notice over here, your input to algorithm is not complete matrices. The only input to algorithm is our p vector. That is we have created from in our original problem in L shape. Right. So from L shape we have prepared our p vector. If it is already given, that is not a difficulty. We can directly start working out. So whatever the element are there in my p, there will be one lesser so here my matrix is created from 1 to n and 1 to n rows and 1 to n columns. From matrix S also created as or table S is also of dimension 1 to n minus 1. Remember we have one lesser row. So here rows are from 1 to n minus 1. And columns are also lesser but from starting point we have removed first column. That's why columns are from 2 to n, right? So that is the dimension of my S table. So these are two new tables. So their value will be initially 0. That's why we are writing for i equals to 1 to n, m of i comma i is 0. So all the diagonal values will be set to 0. Now we are going to fill up the inside of diagonal table. So from i am actually numbering, first diagonal which is about zero diagonal that is my line number two so my first diagonal that we are going to fill up is my diagonal two the diagonal is line two all right so the line above it is actually line three and the only cell that we have remained is actually line four so my first line is nothing but a diagonal containing all zero elements from second diagonal that is second line we have started over another loop so from line number two to final or the last line that is to up to fourth line row number is starting from one and going up to last row and column number is actually starting from the reverse order if we have row one we have started from column two in our second line from row one we have started with column three and so on that's why my j is initialized as i plus line number minus one so that is my J, uh, J or column number. Initially, the cell is initialized with infinity so that I can compare a new value and pick up the minimum value out of that. So, here my k is starting from 1 and going up to J minus 1. My q or temporary term is calculated as m of i k plus m of k plus 1 J plus p of i minus 1 into p of k into p j. Now these values are calculated and stored inside q. Now this q is my partial term. If it is less than an existing value, the new value will be inside inserted inside my m array and its equivalent k value will be also stored inside my s table. Now we all know that initial value of ij we have set to infinity. So first of time, whatever the calculated value will be there will be stored inside m of ij. And its k value will be stored again. If the loop is continuing, if there do exist another values of k, then another q will be calculated. If it is ex lesser than an existing value, then only it will be replaced by new q and new k. Otherwise, their value will be as it is. That is what we have in total in our matrix chain order multiplication. Now we will see optimal parenthesization. Now parenthesization is nothing but the order in which we have to multiply. From our previous data, we only know that how many scalar multiplications will be there. There will be 158 multiplications that we have just seen. But what about the order in which we have to multiply? Do I need to multiply A1, A2 first or A2 with A3 first or A3 with A4 first? What is an order of multiplication? 
For that purpose, we make use of S table. So this S table is going to get used to generate our sequence. So it is having or follow me a matrix order algorithm. What is matrix order algorithm? It takes table S itself and row is I and column number J. Inside it, it first checks whether row number is equals to column number. Then we are going to print A of I. Otherwise, we are going to print opening bracket. Then we are recursively calling matrix order function S with I and S of IJ. And printing close A multiplication sign. Then again, we are making another recursive call with passing table S, S of IJ plus 1 and J. Passing three parameters. Then we will put closing sign. That is what my matrix order multiplication or order of parenthesization is. But how it exactly works in our case? So let us take this S and start working. So we are working from our top. That is from the corner element. The corner element whose row number is 1 and column number is 4. That is the topest element in my S table. So here I am going to make a call to S of 1 comma 4. I am referring which cell S of 1 comma 4. So whenever 1 is not equals to or row number is not equals to column number. As you know row is first and column is 4. So row is not equals to column number. So what we are going to do? We are going to put first opening bracket. Then we will put S 1 comma some value into S of some value comma 4 and closing bracket. As you see 1 is nothing but row and 4 is nothing but column. So from my first call row number will be same. From my second recursive call my column number will be same. Their intermediate two values we are going to put is from S table. That is the cell value itself. The cell value itself is 3. That's why I will make S of 1 comma 3. Here it will be 3 as it is. So whatever value we have written here, plus 1 value will go inside your another term. That is equal to 4. Because here it is 3, this will be my 4 value. Alright, now we will take 1 comma 3. First we will consider 1 comma 3, S of 1 comma 3. Row is 1 and column number is 3. So 1 is not equal to 3, that's why we are going to put opening bracket closing bracket s of 1 comma some value into s of some value comma 3 and this complete term is placed only as a replacement of s of 1 comma 3. So before that term there were an opening bracket which is kept as it is and after that term there was multiplication sign and s of 4 comma 4 and closing bracket was there. So that is also kept as it is. Only instead of S, 1, 3, we have put our 5 terms. That is opening bracket, closing bracket, multiplication, S of 1, some value and S of some value, 3. Now what value will go inside this? We know we are referring cell number 1, 3. So let us go to cell number 1 and column number 3. What value is there in cell? There is value 1. So 1 will go in my first call and the second call there will be 2. So that is what we have done. Now we will consider only S of 1 comma 1. Row is 1 and column is 1. As you know row is equals to column then instead of call we are just replacing A1 because it was 1 comma 1. If it was 2 comma 2 we would have written A of 2. So instead of S 1 comma 1 we have just replaced or inserted a term a1 now a1 is already placed but there are two recursive calls first call is s of 2 comma 3 so let us start or let us see how to solve this s of 2 comma 3 remaining terms will be typed as it is but in place of s 2 comma 3 2 is not equal to 3 so we are going to substitute opening bracket s of 2 comma some value into s of some value comma 3. So that is what we have written in our next line. That is what value we have to put in this fill in the blank. So we will see it from s table that is row 2 and column 3. Which value we will pick? We will put value number 2. 
So this 2 will be inserted in first bracket and 3 will be inserted that is plus 1 will be inserted in another bracket. We will first select S of 2 comma 2. So as you know 2 comma 2 row is 2 and column is 2. Row is equal to column number. What we will do in this case? We will put A2 instead of S comma. Right. So here it will be A2. Next we will consider S of 3 comma 3. Another call. Again 3 is equal to 3. That is row is equal to column. So instead of S of 3 comma 3 we will only write down A3. Remaining brackets and multiplication sign won't change. Next term is S of 4 comma 4. Now S of 4 comma 4 is actually row is 4 and column is 4. So instead of A of 4 comma 4 we will directly or simply put A of 4. Final value or final result is first A2 and A3 will get multiplied. Then A1 will be multiplied with this partial result and at the end we are to going to multiply the compartial result with A4. So order of parenthesization is A2 with A3, A1 with this parenthesis and this parenthesis is with A4. That is what our complete order of multiplication is. Alright, so I hope you are clear with this uh, matrix order multiplication, a complete method of finding optimal cost and optimal parenthesization. For your exercise, here one problem is being specified. I hope you get a final and correct answer to it. Till then, take care. This is your instructor Munira Topia signing out.